Judas Iscariot, the apostle who betrayed Jesus and sold him to the Roman soldiers. Judas' betrayal of Jesus is obviously a turning point in the gospel because it precipitates Jesus' arrest, interrogation, and subsequent crucifixion. Judas was a devout apostle of Jesus. He wasn't firstly a betrayer. He wasn't just a follower of Jesus. He was one of the very close friends of Jesus. His proximity earned him the position of the financial secretary of the ministry of Jesus. Jesus trusted him with the bank account of his ministry because Judas was so responsible. He made a commitment to Jesus and there was no reason to think Judas was anything but sincere. But before we continue, I would like to encourage you to please subscribe to our YouTube channel and click on the notification bell to be notified when we upload a new video each time. Thanks for supporting God's work. God bless you. If we study the personality of Judas throughout the Bible, we will find out that Judas was a gospel preacher. He was given the gift of healing and he exercised authority over demons. He had spiritual gifts. He could perform signs and wonders, but he ended up as a betrayer. This goes to show us that having spiritual gifts alone is not enough. It is a good and wonderful thing to have gifts of the Spirit, but it is not in itself a guarantee of spiritual life or health. We see that from the life of Judas, we don't only need spiritual gifts, we need the fruits of the Spirit also. Galatians chapter 5 verse 22 to 23 But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. It is the fruit of the Spirit that will help you stay far from the trick of the enemy. I am sure that Judas never planned on being a betrayer at the beginning. Judas heard all the preachings of the greatest preacher that ever lived. He heard the sermons directly from Jesus himself. So he knew that there is a narrow road that leads to life and a broad road that leads to destruction. He heard all the warnings Jesus spoke to the Pharisees. So he knew all about loyalty and disloyalty. He knew about Lucifer and his betrayal in heaven, where Jesus preached about it in Luke chapter 10 verse 13. He was aware that it was wrong to be disloyal. With Judas' own eyes, he heard the finest teaching. With his own feet, he followed the greatest example. And with his own eyes, he saw the clearest evidence. And yet, this man still betrayed Jesus. There are stories like these I have heard. Once, I heard a story of a man called Richard. He was made a manager by his friend in a factory. Before he became a manager, he had no job, no house of his own. He lived from hand to mouth. He was embarrassed to be with people because of how he dressed. He was nothing. So one day, his friend called him over and decided to help him. His friend showed him all the businesses he had and how to run each of them. He trusted the major part of his business to him so that he would manage it. He was so thankful to his friend and so they worked together for some years. A time came. This man started to think to himself, maybe I can take over the whole business and have it all to myself. 
Richard's friend, although he was very wealthy, he had companies and lots of employees, but he had a problem. This problem was the biggest secret of his life. He had never told anyone this secret. It was a medical condition that had made him impotent. This condition cost him the joy of having a baby or even being in a relationship. He couldn't have sexual intercourse with anyone. This condition had made him very depressed so many times. This caused him to always live on pills so that he could put up a smiling face the next day at work. Richard's friend decided to open up to Richard and he told him of his secret. He felt Richard was a brother to him. He even called Richard brother sometimes. He begged Richard to keep the secret forever. He called Richard his confidant and his brother. He never knew that Richard was planning to take over his entire wealth. I mean, how can someone you help from nothing decide to plan against you? Okay, let's continue. Richard did the unthinkable. They had a little argument one day about the progress of the company. This argument made Richard very upset. And so he decided to tell everyone about his friend's secret. He told everyone in the company about it. And when his friend heard the news, he went into chronic depression. He wasn't able to function in the company because he was ashamed of himself. The media and everyone knew about it. He resigned from all his companies. Richard became the new owner of the companies. He was heartbroken that Richard betrayed him just because of an argument. He couldn't take it. The pain of betrayer wouldn't leave his memory. And so, he decided to end his life. He died. Richard couldn't see the good his friend had shown him. He was drowned in greed and he was lost with his lust for material things. He chose his greed over his loyalty for his friend. This was the same thing Judas did to Jesus. Judas chose his greed over his loyalty to Jesus. Despite being close to Jesus, he still opened the door for the devil to sell such thoughts of betrayal to him. Luke chapter 22 verse 3 to 4 tells us that then Satan entered into Judas Iscariot, being of the number of the twelve. And he went his way and communed with the chief priests and captains how he might betray him unto them. Why will Satan enter into him? This was because of the kind of secret life he was living. Judas looked righteous in the open, but his secret wrong lifestyle opened the door for the devil to come in. Judas had been stealing from the collective money bag of the ministry. He kept his sin secret. This opened the door to Satan. He sat on the same table with Jesus but refused to confess his sin to Jesus. Unconfessed sins always opens the door to Satan and his agents. When we go before Jesus, and confess our sins we get cleansed by his blood the cleansing of our soul makes it impossible for the devil to come into our heart Satan doesn't gain a foothold in the lives of people who are working in the light he can only gain access into our life when we open the door of our life by living in secret sins there may be a Judas close by Maybe someone you know, or maybe you may be the one living in secret sins. There is no shame in coming to God and asking for forgiveness. God is a loving Father. He knows how to help you overcome that secret sin. Don't cover that addiction. You are a child of God, and if you would just open up to Him, then He will show you his mercy. 
If you have listened up to this point, I want to thank you for staying this far. We hope you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe for more videos on Christian living, perspective and faith. Like and share as well. Let us know in the comment section if you have ever been betrayed before and what did you take from this video. We love to read your comments and hope to see your perspective. Once again, thanks for watching. Till next time, have a blessed day.